playing online and on smart devices. Now on London Scotty Radio, it's podcast time. I'm George Matlock. Welcome, welcome to Scotty MOT, the health and well-being show from London's Scotty Club. Uh, it was Jackie's turn this month, but alas, she is unwell, so we send her our very, very best wishes for a speedy recovery. And we have on standby Kath Marshbank from Scotty Charity Sticks. Um, hello, hello, Kath. Um, how are you? I'm well, thank you, George. It's been a bit of a mad day, though, uh, with the heat that's... Uh descended upon us it means for the first time we've had them to con- cancel the garden party oh no yeah due to the increased heat it's just going to be too bad for the dogs you know it's too much of a health risk yeah so we're having to cancel on saturday unfortunately oh no <laughs> well the on the good side there's always next year there is, and hopefully we might be able to put something on an afternoon cream tea, maybe early October, late September, early October. Oh, that sounds nice. That yeah. sounds nice indeed. Cream teas in October. Yeah, yeah super. Good. Yeah, indeed, the weather is incredibly hot. Um, I mean, we thought we'd seen it right in July. We thought we saw the back of it, and then it's back, these 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 terribly high uh, temperatures. in uh, Where was the, the location for the, 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 the garden party? We were going to hold it at my house on the fields at mm-hmm. Weatherton, uh, but unfortunately, just not enough um, trees, not enough shade. It's going to be too uh, too dangerous for the dogs. Right, right. And what sort of temperatures are they forecasting? They're forecasting 30, 31, 32 degrees. Yeah, yeah. And this weekend, it's actually going to be 35, 36, even 37, they were talking about here in London. So yeah. really, these temperatures are, you know, tarmac uh, melting te- uh, temperatures really too much too much for walking the dogs uh, w- uh, you know big shout out to everyone walk your dogs early in the morning late at night not during the day it really is going to be too much for everyone yeah definitely and just you right. know people coming over in the cars you know making the journey it's just too hot for the dogs absolutely absolutely and we still remind uh, well remember what you said uh, last in the last Sc- uh, scotty mot program uh, which was about um, leaving your dogs in the car. You you don't want to be doing that, that's for sure. No, definitely not. Okay. So a quick reminder, first of all, that um, if you have a question for Scotty MOT, uh, please visit scotty.scott. That's Scotty with an I-E. Scotty.scott has a radio question form, so you can fill that out, attach photos or a short video if you think that might help and send it to us and we'll endeavour to answer your question in a future episode of Scotty M.O.T. <coughs> Go on, do it now. And, you know, the beauty of podcasts is that uh, you can start them over again and again any time. So that's something I think we can take a bow for. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, maybe less of that. Uh, so on today's show, um, we'll be back in the garden. Now, I know you're going to say... We can never get enough of it, right? Well, it's true. Um, We are back in the garden. Well, why not? Um, It's really hot weather. And uh, we know that this this continues. You just heard from Kath what's happening. Um, And those lucky enough to have a garden are spending more time out there than indoors. Well, later in the show, we'll be talking about one pest which is persistent at this time of the year uh, that has already caused some discomfort to uh, Fraser's Douglas as well as to my Pikush, uh, both of them becoming rather hopping mad. And I refer to that as a little bit of a suspension mode. We'll tell you more about that later in the program. But first, uh, the choice of plants for the garden or the balcony. Uh, Not too late to put some foliage in the soil and certainly i would say it's a good time to be planning your garden for 2023 and if you don't have a garden fear not we uh, have also thought about that and we'll examine some of the plants that you could have 
indoors. Yes, we thought of everything. Well, nearly anyway. Um, in previous editions of Scotty MOT, um, we um, looked at what to avoid putting into the into the garden. Well, this time uh, we're going to be looking at uh, things that you should be putting into the garden. So hopefully, if you've been holding back in fear because of what we said in our previous programmes and you have now nothing but a continuous patio next to the scorched brown grass and the looming risk of a hosepipe ban, um, we've got some tips for you and what to plant. Okay, after that long uh, ramble, uh, just to say that I came across a few fancy items for indoors, uh, so for potted plants and that. Uh, the Safe as Houses spider plant is a good one, uh, safe for your dogs. Uh, also the lovely red flame tipped Scarlet Star, the Chinese money plant, and the dodgy sounding Calathea rattlesnake plant. Kath, what did you uncover for those indoors? Uh, for those plants in, indoors, I think that rattlesnake one sounds very scary. <laughs> <laughs> it does indeed. But I think it'll be, you know, really nice foliage. Um, with the indoor plants, still make sure that the dogs can't really get to them, even though they are safe for the dogs. You don't want them to be able to go on them and purposely chew them and eat them because even though they are safe it's it's not the best thing for them to eat uh, for the outdoor plants one of the best things to um, or even your window bottom on your windowsill in the kitchen your herbs you can use them for cooking spice oh. up your foods um, rosemary dill um, any of the herbs all edible for humans great for the dogs as well mm. so they'll grow beautifully in tubs outside in the garden Yep. into the into the flower beds mixing with your other plants in the garden so it's it's a nice safe thing to grow mm. you've also got the magnolia tree magnolia bush that's safe for dogs the camellia yes indeed um you know so two nice big foliage plants your other ed um well edible for humans as well as dogs your marigolds the little violas they're all all good and safe Excellent. And also, you know, attracting the bees, nice colour. Yep. So. Okay, so it's quite a, a few. Uh, yeah, I mean, I must admit, I picked up on some of those myself. Um, looking now, really at the gar at the garden itself, good and proper. So outdoors, we've got a couple of camellia plants, um, which seem to be fine, and uh, the dogs don't bother it, and it doesn't bother the dogs. So that seems to be pretty good apparently safe um also uh, as you mentioned the dills we've got some of that it's one of our favorite fish dish um herbs so that's uh, that's definitely there uh, and of course the marigolds we don't have but i too have heard good things about that of course they have a very bright and sunny color colorful look and great displays of reds golds and and yellows uh, but apparently they also act as a great deterrent against other pests such as beetles and the like yeah so good stuff to uh, to to have, um, and really looking now at the garden itself. What uh, what did you unearth in the undergrowth? What what other plants do you think in the garden would be uh, would be suitable? Um, again, more more of the herbs: rosemary, thyme, sage. You know, all nice smelling plants. Mm. Sometimes too smelly, the dogs will actually go and dig them up and eat them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had some lovely carnations that the dogs had a good nibble on the other day. So they've had to go up into a basket up onto the wall rather than being on the ground level. Right. Um, you know, but um, again, you know, the, the, they're edible, they're, they're able to be eaten, which is good news. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and um, yeah, you, you mentioned um, a, a number of herbs there. One of the nice things about rosemary and, and things of that sort, I presume lavender as well, right? I think it's probably probably safe. Uh, is that it also offers very good ground cover. So if you've got a situation where you're struggling to cover up the patches of soil in between, uh, those kinds of shrubs are really good at, at providing that sort of uh, co coverage um, for in the garden, aren't they? Yeah. You've got to be careful with lavender. Oh, right. Because sometimes it can have a little bit of a dust on it and that can cause an allergy, causing the dogs to sneeze. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Ah. It does give off at certain times a bit of a... It's not mildew. It's it's a bit of a funny... Uh, a funny... Um, so like a dust. A dust yeah, on the lavender, dust, le on the dust. leaves. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that can cause the dogs to sneeze. Right. It doesn't have any lasting damage uh, concerns, I, does it, to health? I don't believe to health? so. Um, but I do know so, a human who's allergic to it and it caused him to end up in A&E. Oh, right. You know, an ambulance being called and being rushed off. And we always think of lavender as being the soothing, rather medicinal almost uh, plant, um, which calms us down or whatever, and somebody ends up in A&E. Can't, yeah. uh, can't say it works for everyone. It's like everything. No. Yeah. And same, you know, for our dogs, even though they say this is safe, you know, don't on purpose let the dogs eat things because too much of something can cause an upset tummy. Yeah. OK, well, thanks, Cass. So on Scotty MOT, we had some really good tips there for your garden, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and if listeners didn't catch the names of the plants, do not worry. Uh, as well as, of course, playing back the podcast, um, we will be listing those plants and a few others in a Word document, which will be attached to this very podcast episode. Uh, best to head over to uh, either to scotty.scott uh, which gets you straight into the podcast page, uh, or otherwise visit londonscotty.club uh, to find this uh, this file. And th in fact, this is for episode, wait for it, wait for it, episode 30, would you believe? Episode 30 of the show. We are now at episode 30. How does that feel, Kath? Wow, that, <laughs> they're flying by, aren't they? They are indeed. We'll be back after this commercial. This is Jenny. I listen to London Scotty Radio podcasts when walking my lovely Scotty Logan. It's the perfect accompaniment to a leisurely dog walk. I'm Eileen. I like to listen to London Scotty podcast while chilling with a glass of wine and preparing dinner. It's Max here. I listen to the podcasts and the bubble bar for fab tips. This is Zelda. I like to do lino cuts of Scotties. That's what I do when I'm listening to the podcast. I listen to them for inspiration. This is Fraser, the London Scotty Club podcast. It's a great way to end the day. OK, thanks, gang, for that. Um, and finally, let's take a look at that other topic that we mentioned earlier on, um, something that has caused our very important pooches discomfort this month. It lurks in any garden that has a lawn, and it's a nuisance this time of year when grass is vibrant, growing and looking to multiply. I refer, of course, to grass seed, and in particular to something we call foxtail. Um, Kath, why is it called foxtail and what is it? It's the, the seed of the grass, it implants in, but as you try to pull it out, it spreads out. Mm. And, and those little tails, they, they come out and it, it stops you being able to pull the, the seed, that foxtail out. So it's very difficult. A lot of the times the dog's got to be surgically, a big cut around it to take the the whole skin away mm. if it was just a smooth seed that went in you, you know it would come out this you know a bit like a coffee bean right it would come out on its own but this because it it embeds itself into different things it it really um locks on tight into the dog's paw yeah or onto if it on the fur it, fur it then travels up into and gets onto the skin and lodges itself in so it can cause massive, you know, really big infection and uh, a big problem to get out to remove. Yeah. I mean, Kath, you don't strike me as a carpenter type of person, but you might be. I don't know. You might be good with a drill bit. I don't know. Um, but it this what you're describing there reminds me very much of what we used to call roll plugs. I know they come under other names now in the DIY shops, but these plastic bullet type things which have these kind of ribs along them and the idea is that you if you're uh, 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 drilling holes into masonry stone that sort of thing you need one of these to go into the into the wall uh, before you uh, pl uh, put a screw inside it um, and it basically secures and maintains the the uh, the screw inside stone because otherwise over time uh, with movement um, a, a, a screw can actually fall out or, or can be at least weakened in the in the cavity so it really reminds me of those kinds of things you're quite right they have these sort of bristles and then they, it lodges in and then of course you can't pull it back out you, you just can't reverse it really can you no. and there i was thinking that foxtail was somebody being rude about my oxtail soup oh. there you go anyway anyway we live and learn we live and learn so what's the best thing to do if you have such uh, or you suspect that your dog has got uh, something like this and is therefore limping probably because it's embedded into into their paw and possibly germinating for all i know that's that, well that's the thing it will germinate it will spread mm. um quite often it does mean a visit to the vets 
um, you know, if it has got embedded in. After you've been for your walks, give the dog a good comb through, a good brush, get right down to the skin. Try yep. to remove any loose um, sticky bits, you know, sticky willies, they call them, um, and the foxtails, any grass seeds, mm. to stop them, you know, getting lodged and embedded in. Right. If it's only just gone into the skin, then you can try a little poultice on the bandage and, you know, try to draw it out. And you might be lucky, but if it's been in there a couple of days, generally it's starting to um, embed in and infest. And the, so you do need that trip to the vets. OK, well, thank you very much for that uh, very sound advice, Kath, and for being on the show today. Um, the the foxtail also slightly reminds me of, of a javelin. Um, and of course, it can get burrowed into paws of dogs and then uh, becomes very hard to, to, to remove and to reverse, as you were saying there, Kath. Kath, thanks again for joining us on the show. And the next Scotty MOT is in a month's time. Wishing you all healthy Scotties. Thanks for listening to London Scotty Radio. This and all our podcasts are available online at londonscotty.club. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to us from your favourite podcast player app. Also visit us on YouTube for fun videos. And if you have a Scottish Terrier in London or nearby, be sure to join us.